5,000 miles. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warrigan. You're watching Gas Tax Garage. In the spirit of getting all of my motorcycles serviced and ready for storage, I decided to take my first ever motorcycle build out for a drive. I guess a drive and talk. So I built this in 2016. It's a 2015 Triumph Scrambler. 900. Uh, I didn't have a garage, a heated garage or a big enough garage to work on this. So I actually worked on it at work in the weekends in a warehouse. I've never actually shown you guys this bike on my channel. Truthfully, I don't use it anymore. I just finished my ride and talk that you guys will be watching now. And I just clocked 5,000 miles once I pulled into this driveway. It's a pity, but I do think this bike's a work of art. I love how it looks. I don't know if I need to keep it or get rid of it because it's just sitting for so long. But anyways, guys, just a quick little fun video for you to hang out with me while I go riding on the bike, listen to the bike, hear the bike. I talk about the bike, um, talk about the build. I figured why not do it? Cause I'm going to be servicing it and putting it away. So anyways, guys, enjoy. The ride and talk. All right, guys. Well, here we are. My 2015 Triumph Scrambler 900. I haven't ridden it uh, in three years. My life's been weird. Um, this was my first motorcycle project, and I think it looks absolutely amazing. So I actually have a painting on this motorbike, or I have a painting of this motorbike by a Japanese artist that paints with chopsticks. And that's in my uh, great room at my house. a bolt on this bike that I haven't touched. Uh, new handlebars, new headlight, new fork springs, new rear shocks, um, obviously new wheels, new tires. I went with the smaller front tire and uh, a wheel and a much wider front and rear. If you look down there, I moved the gauges down to the bottom. Uh, the turn signals are new, the grips are new, the mirrors are new, the brake fluid reservoir is new. The seat is custom from uh, Thailand. Uh, the fenders are both uh, custom from UK. Um, I always, when I used to go on motorcycle trips, I was always the lead and uh, my buddy always yell at me we got the headset we could talk to each other um, that I would never turn off my turn signals I forgot forget to so there's an auto turn off or turn signal turn off um, I, I like the exhaust coming up the side here they had different styles blackout ones but I like the, the natural coloring the stainless steel gets when it's heated so what I did is I took this off and I took blow torches to the exhaust for maybe two or three hours and gave it its gold purple bluish to match the bike and I tell you it looks amazing now when I first got the bike the bike was pretty quiet so then Triumph sells some OEM off-road only exhaust that looked the same they were good but then I saw a video from uh, some guy on YouTube who put a 1974 VW uh, Beetle tips on the exhaust instead of the muffler. They, they are Beetle mufflers, but they rarely muffle. So that is, uh, that's what's on here now, just at the end. Um, yeah, so I shortened the front fender, I shortened the rear fender, relocated the license plate. New chain, I got a gold chain, I don't know if it is gold. I mean, bronze, bronze and blue are the theme. Um, so a new chain, it may not be bronze or goldy anymore, because I haven't used it in a while. But that's what it is, I've got uh, rear, 
rear sprocket is uh, all blacked out. Then on the, all the engine dressing bolts I changed to a chrome. I put a bottle opener on <laughs> the bike as well, uh, which is funny. I got an oil pressure gauge down there, you won't be able to see it here. I got a steering damper. This is a cross rocket steering damper. I love this, see this, you can't see it because my phone's here, there's uh, 20 different adjustments here. And uh, the reason I got a steering damper is because once upon a time I hit a speed wobble at about 110 and I just about shat my pants so <laughs> when I normally ride on the highway I turn it all the way to the stiffest. So it's like pretty stiff now. And uh, yeah, so that's why I have that. I like the look of this one. What else? Oh, the, all the brake lines are new just because they were blacked out and uh, black. I did get uh, blue brake lines, but the blue was more of a royal blue and it, it stood out like a sore thumb. This gas cap is uh, obviously not stock. I love it. I think it really finishes off the bike. And down on the side, it used to have big plastic uh, Triumph badges. Uh, I removed those and I, f local to me, there is a pinstriper guy. He normally does hot rods. I took him uh, the gas tank and he the gold leafed the Triumph logo with some blue and black accents and it looks absolutely amazing. So, I mean, I, I don't use this bike, I don't know why. Probably because I have too many toys. So I either need to start using it or sell it or something. It would be a pity to sell it, but it's a pity for it just to sit in the garage. There's a lot of money I put into this bike. Uh, and it's just fading away, if you will. I mean, the tires are basically... I mean, I, I redid the bike at two and a half thousand miles. It's five thousand miles on it now. So I've put two and a half thousand miles on it uh, like this. Um, but after this bike, I, I did buy uh, the Triumph, I mean the Ural, and then I started doing off-roading adventures and, you know, it was much easier to go camping on that thing when I could take firewood and stuff with us. Um, but yeah, it was, that's, that's the evolution of why I stopped riding the bike, I guess. I don't really ride two-wheel motorcycles that much anymore much as I used to. Um, I would like to think subconsciously because I have kids but to be honest I've only ever started riding bikes once I had kids. I bought this bike two weeks before my wife went into labor. That uh, I don't know she was crazy enough to let me go then I went on a week-long motorcycle trip and I came back and then a week later we had our daughter. Uh, this helmet I have on is also uh, it's a helmet from Europe they sold it in America but it was crazy expensive it's just like a thousand dollar helmet Europe has a different uh, standard of safety than us but I figured uh, if it's safe in Europe it's safe on my head so it's a different safety rating Illinois you don't need a helmet anyway um, and I bought it for six hundred and fifty dollars from I can't remember. Italy? Yeah, I believe it was Italy. So, and that is a matte blue and it happens to match this bike perfectly. Uh, so, that's why I got the helmet. I have a mirror lens on it now, uh, which I love. But when I did bike trips, I couldn't use the mirror lens because it's a sunglass mirror lens. And a lot of times we found ourselves driving at night. And that's not what I like, is to have sunglasses on driving at night. But uh, you can see even at the tips of the steering wheel or the, the handlebars, I have a brass nut on there. Oh yeah, the one thing I do have is, uh, if you look in the mirror there, or in the pictures, there is a saddlebag, a hard case saddlebag. That was uh, a lot of customizing to try to get that case on here. I only have one saddlebag, so it's uh, lopsided. I think it 
definitely adds character and looks awesome. Uh, I've never seen a hard bag on these, especially a high gloss GV bag. Um, they normally soft saddle bags, but I don't want soft saddle. Also, because I used to go camping on this bike, um, I wanted hard sided for security. So after I bought the Euro, I did a couple camping trips on that. Then we wanted to go more off-roady through uh, trees and stuff, and obviously the Euro isn't a good bike for that. So then I bought a DR650, and I still have that, and I built that out for adventure riding, and that's a bike you can take around the world. Uh, I've got a GPS on there, uh, I've got saddlebags, upgraded the suspension. Obviously, being a big guy, I need to always upgrade the shocks and the suspension. But especially on that bike, because I would take about 150 pounds of gear uh, with me. I wouldn't say it's 150 pounds of gear, but uh, I was definitely 150, 200 pounds over the recommended weight. So I needed to beef up the suspension. But yeah guys, what do you think of this bike? I absolutely uh, love it. I don't use it enough. I need to... Well, and obviously it's going into winter now, so it's so stupid that I just took this out now. But to be honest, I never really ride with a helmet on. Um, that's probably why I use my Triumph or my Euro more, because it's such a tank and people can see me. And I never really go on the highway that much. If I do motorcycle trips, I always wear a helmet. If I'm just riding around town, I never wear a helmet, which is dumb. But, uh, yeah, so I never wear a helmet. So, that's probably why I don't ride this bike as well. Also, in the summer, it's hot as balls. So, getting dressed up. Like, I always wear shorts and a t-shirt when I ride. So... Now when you got uh, that third wheel missing and you can slide out, it's always good to wear long clothing, which I have on now, but you know, this long clothing will get me an extra eighth of a second uh, further sliding than, <laughs> than my bare skin. Really should wear leathers. Oh yeah, the brake and clutch lever are new as well. And they're adjustable so you can change the depth of them also depending on uh, what gloves you're wearing a lot of my riding was in spring and fall because that's why i camp in the in spring and fall and winter i hate the heat if i'm uh, if if it's gonna be hot i'm gonna be on the boat so it's crazy i've already got like five people <laughs> giving me a thumbs up on my bike I always thought this would be a good bike uh, to show I actually did enter it into uh, one show it didn't uh, get anywhere but uh, what I picture is it's a good like uh, cars and coffee or whatever they do for bikes kind of a show bike because it is different looking um, but it's also cool looking there is a Royal Enfeld driving over there, an Indian bike. But yeah. See, another thumbs up. This bike is uh, fucking awesome. I love it. <laughs> Probably shouldn't sell it. Another reason I have the bikes that I have is they are not fast um, and I'm a speed demon that's obviously where my Corvette and tracking is coming from now but I don't like breaking the law if you will I'm not gonna go 130 on the highways to me that's just fucking stupid accelerating to 100 and slowing back down that's cool that's why I will uh, do the track days. Um, but if you look here, this bike says it goes 130. Uh, the max I've ever gone, I think, is 105. You don't really want to go any faster on this thing. Um, but 
that's also uh, look crotch rockets are not comfortable by any means but i know if i had one i'd want to see how fast i could go and yeah i've pushed this bike as fast as it can go and <laughs> that was a 105 so you know that's just who i am i know i know who i am i, I don't want to do stupid things on a bike that can go 200 miles an hour because all those crotch rockets can definitely get up there and uh, at 200, uh, well, 150, no, about 200, 180 miles an hour, it looks like that uh, screensaver on the PCs from back in the day. Just things flying by your head. And uh, you don't have time for shit there. If you make a one wrong move, you're dead. Uh, so, <laughs> that's why knowing your limits and uh, making sure you don't buy things that will push you past your limits is a, <laughs> a good move oh the one thing I have never upgraded I think the only thing I haven't upgraded I mean I don't modify the engine but I, I've taken the airbox out of here I put a different airbox on here but uh, the one thing I haven't modified is uh, the brake pedal on the, on the foot brake pedal <laughs> I've changed the pegs out I've changed the shifter to adjustable shifter depending if I'm wearing boots or not but I've never changed the actual brake pedal which is hilarious it's just stock and it's pretty hideous at that Lose one set of cars, they get caught up in another set of cars. So this looks like a, well obviously it's a fresh road. But it's got some sheen to it, so... Oil you look here oil could be a problem it's the thing with bikes you just got to be aware of absolutely everything in your surrounding water obviously uh, oil on the road you can see the oil run off on this concrete bridge here um, yeah riding a motorcycle the most tiring thing is mental Especially when you're doing six, seven hundred miles a day. Uh, sure, your butt gets sore, but uh, <laughs> nothing like your brain. Especially when you're driving in traffic or on a busy highway. Also, the scary thing is the divider in the road here is sketchy during construction. Right now, it's flush, but when there's a good two or three inch lip or a one inch lip, whatever it is. That's uh, the super scary part. Because that can catch your wheel and uh, you'll go down real quick. I guess the other reason I don't to wear a helmet is because but I'm going 75 right now and your face is comfortable <laughs> when you don't wear a helmet obviously your face is the windshield all my bikes don't have windshields uh, so bugs hit you the wind is harsh it's even uh, your eyes water uh, you have to by law wear eye protection but sunglasses are good until a certain speed and 75 is not those speeds <laughs> it's like 55 is max just with sunglasses unless you get special riding sunglasses so I'm gonna actually this is a highway north that's uh, with street lights and shit. There's a highway just to the west of me. 
the 94. Right there, you'll see the, the street sign. That's the tollway. I'm gonna take the tollway home. Hopefully I remember to pay the, the tolls because I actually just want to keep driving this with the uh, out stopping every five minutes. All right, you guys, there's the highway. I'm just gonna cruise, probably not talk, listen to some music and enjoy the bike. So enjoy the ride if you want to be with me. And if not, thanks a lot for tuning in. And until next time, I'll see you then.